Hector Mojado, do you think that David Miscavige will introduce more modern tech to replace the e-meters and teletype currently in place? If so, what do you see replacing this outdated tech? If not, could you envision a situation where David Miscavige replaces and edits Hubbard's works to remove outdated references to e-meters and such? Also, do you think the dated tech influences would-be Scientologists and or current Scientologists, and how do you think it affects their perception of the Church of Scientology and Hubbard? Also, do you like Westworld? Okay, Hector. So, uh, first off, yeah, I enjoyed Westworld. I thought it was kind of fun. Um, a little deep, you know, a little hard to understand, a little cryptic. Um, and you know, I, I never really liked watching the whole season twice to, you know, get all the little weird references and stuff, but I'll probably have to do that again before season two comes along. So, we'll see. Now, as far as the bigger question you have here, the truth is that Miscavige is already doing that, right? The Church of Scientology doesn't use teletypes anymore. They've converted all the telex system uh, to emails, right? That's actually the technology that's used now. It's all digitalized, uh, digitized rather, and, and digital uh, communications, and they just format the emails to look like telexes, right? But that's, uh, but they don't use telex technology anymore. Um, also, the e-meters, the, the latest e-meter, the Mark 8, is totally, is a completely digital meter. It's not, uh, there's no, you know, mechanical stuff going on inside there, but in other, but the, the needle movement, that kind of thing, it's this, the circuitry has remained the same, but um, any mechanical parts have been removed from it, right? The old original e-meters had a, a, what's called a tone arm that you would use to adjust the needle, and it was kind of a, a, a mechanical thing, right? Now it's not. Now it's all digital. So, um, so that, you know, so he has changed and upgraded old you know, outdated technology in Scientology, they're never going to get rid of e-meters. They are, the, the electropsychometer is way too important to the, the con of Scientology to get rid of it, right? There's just no way. And, there, and it's referenced in so many places that you would never be able to go back and edit all of it out of Scientology. Um, in fact, the OT levels demand the use of the meter because the meter is the the meter responding to the the you know the guy holding the cans is what convinces people who do those crazy ot levels that it's real right oh the needle moves so it must be true right there's a that th this device has all kinds of uh, mysticism and lore connected with it that is central to the the belief system of scientology so um, so there's some things that are never going to get rid of, uh, but there's all kinds of things that they've already gotten rid of as time has moved forward, although they'll still hold on to those names, right? Um, you know, the statistics and everything that, that management gets every week, that's all computerized now. Uh, tons of all the reports and, and uh, files and things that fly around in Scientology, all that used to be hard copy, a lot of it is digitized now. Um, I don't know if they're ever going to do that with those PC folders or not. Uh, those are all been, you know, when you're in a session and the auditor is keeping a worksheet of the of the what the the guy receiving the counseling, the preclear, is saying and what the meter is doing. That's all written down. I don't know that that's going to change. It it could. They could easily. They have a device now that that literally records the person's voice and what the needle is doing on the meter. And there's no reason that they couldn't use that device to record auditing sessions and, you know, play them back or whatever. Um, but I don't know that that all in itself would replace the, the worksheets, right? That, that the guy is sitting there writing what the preclear looks like and sounds like and what he's saying and stuff. So, um, so we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens with that as, as time rolls forward. But, but those are, those, you know, as far as whether this affects would-be Scientologists or current Scientologists, no, the technology, these bits of, of, of tech are not the thing that are the make-break of people's belief in Scientology. It's the philosophic points and the faith of Scientology that, that gets people hooked. The idea that they're a spiritual being is, is a, you know, is a faith-based idea that all Scientologists believe. And then they are, uh, you know, talked to and indoctrinated in such a way that they don't think it's a faith-based belief. They think it's a scientific belief, which, you know, speaks volumes about their understanding of science. But, 
you know, that's what they think. Um, and that's the thing that hooks people into Scientology is that kind of indoctrination and that kind of, of you know, the, the, the um, well, basically just false information that they're given that they then believe is true. So, um, so that's the thing that hooks people in. And as far as, you know, would-be Scientologists, uh, you know, being repelled by old e-meters or teletypes or something, yeah, no. Uh, what people are being repelled from Scientology by now is the truth of Scientology, which is that it's an abusive, destructive cult, which is only interested in people's money. So, uh, and then no amount of updating or editing their lectures is ever going to change that. So that's, you know, that's kind of how I, how I see that whole thing.